Hi, it's Nero here from Investment Rise. And if you're at all interested in the property market, you've probably seen multiple headlines over the last few days and weeks, all talking about the property market crashing. And I'm seeing so many property investors asking the question, is now the time to be looking to buy an investment property or should we wait? So if that's you, then I'm aiming to address that question in this episode by talking about data and looking at what's happened throughout history when interest rates have risen. Okay, now why am I uniquely placed to address this particular issue? It's because when I started investing in property back 20 years ago, so in 2002, I started investing in a market that was poised at essentially the exact same point in the cycle as it is right now. Let me explain. So here we have the cash rate target from the Reserve Bank of Australia. And you can see its, its graph here. And if I scroll down now, you can see that every time there was a interest rate reduction, it's in sort of this yellowy color. And every time interest rates increase, which was the last time was sort of 11 years ago, 12 years ago, uh, where we can see it's in green, okay? And so let's go back to 2002. Two. So here we are, 2003, 2002, okay? Now, if we go back, you can see that we had had a number of rate cuts in the previous uh, time period, in the previous year. And then in 2002, we had two rate increases, okay? And all of a sudden, people are saying, oh, that's gonna cause the property market to, to crash, okay? Especially the, the Sydney market, which was considered expensive back 20 years ago when property prices, the median property price in Sydney is probably less than half of what it is right now, but it was considered expensive back then. And there was all this talk again in the media of property prices dropping. And then here was me, this young kid straight out of uni, looking to invest in property. And people were saying, don't do it. And thankfully, I didn't listen to the headlines at the time. I started doing my own research and I bought a property in late 2002 against the advice of, I guess, many people I knew. And to their surprise and mine, I actually doubled my money in 18 months. Now, of course, there's no guarantee that anyone who buys property today is going to double their money in 18 months, but it does immediately raise the question that if the argument is that when interest rates rise, property prices fall, then that argument has to be consistent throughout history, okay? And here we are, I'm showing you just one personal example. I'll show you what's happened, what happened to the market in, in a moment, but here's me giving you a personal example of how I actually made money during a period of time when interest rates were rising. But now let's have a look at what happened to property prices when interest rates rose, okay? And this is a great article in Yahoo Finance, which talks about how it is actually quite rare for rate hiking cycles to coincide with falling house prices. What, hold my beer? <laughs> okay, so not counting the current interest rate cycle, there have been four instances in the past 30 years where the RBA has implemented an interest rate hiking cycle. Here we are, August 1994 to December 1994, cash rate up 275 basis points. So that means in a four month period, the Reserve Bank of Australia raised their interest rate 2.75%. All right, then we have from November 1999 to August 2000, this is an eight month period, the cash rate was increased 250 basis points or two and a half percent. Then in from May 2002 to March 2008, which is the period of time that I started investing in, the cash rate increased 300 basis points or 3%. And then we had the most recent one, which is from October 2009 to November 2010. So a 13 month period when the cash rate was increased by 175 basis points or 1.75%. All right, now here's the actual surprising data. Okay, so ignore the, the, everyone's opinions. Here's the data. In each one of these four cycles, house prices were flat or higher, both one and two years after the first rate hike. So here we have the rate hiking cycle between October 2009 and November 2010. Median house price rose 4.4%, one year after the first hike. And remember, when you're buying property, 
this is not a short-term vehicle, right? We're not buying, say, shares or, or options, for, for example, where you might buy today and sell in a week's time. Property investing is a long-term process, and I see so many investors getting caught up in the short-term noise. And sure, you want to take into consideration what's happening in the market, absolutely, but that should be just one input point and you take that into consideration when formulating the right strategy. But if you have a, this short-term mindset of saying, oh, I'm gonna buy only when everyone tells me the market is, is booming and then I'm not gonna buy when I'm reading about the market crashing, you're more than likely just gonna miss out or end up buying too late in the cycle because I don't know anybody, and I've personally been investing for, for 20, 20 years and I've met countless in, investors, many who have bigger portfolios than me, I have never met anyone, never met anyone who has the ability to have this perfect working crystal ball where they can pick the very bottom of the market and enter just before prices rise and then get out just before prices may be slightly correct, okay? So if that's what you're trying to do, I wish you well, but let's have a look at the data about what actually happened to property prices. And here you can see the first rate hiking cycle between October 2009 and November 2010, prices rose 4.4% one year after the first hike. May 2002 to March 2008, house prices rose 18.1% one year after the first hike. November 1999 to August 2000, that rate hiking cycle, house prices rose 6.6% one year after the first rate hike. And then here we have August 1994 to December 1994, house price change one year after the first hike, 0%. So you can see there has been no crash that's coincided with interest rates being increased, okay? But then you might be thinking, ah, you're Nero, but you're comparing it to the first rate hike. What about when they have multiple rate hikes compared to the last rate hike? Okay, let's do that. This article goes on to do exactly that, and here we go. So rate hiking cycle from October 2009 to November 2010. The house price change one year after the last rate hike was minus 4.1%. Now that's no crash by anyone's imagination, okay? The, the last rate hike were in after the period May 2002 to March 2008, one year later, house prices had dropped all of 4.6%. But look at this, from November 1999 to August 2000, one year after that last rate hike, house prices rose 14%. And the rate hiking period between August 1994 to December 1994, house prices rose 0.3%, one year after the last hike. So the data clearly shows that there has been no massive property crash whenever interest rates have risen. Okay, but the other thing to consider is that the data I'm showing you is just median prices. Okay, so that's the, what's happening across the country. But what you should then take from this is that means that there have been markets in the past that have risen quite significantly when interest rates rose. Let me give you an example. In the rate hiking period between 2002 to 2008, okay, variable home loan interest rates increased 22 times in six years, okay? So that's a large number of increases, right? Yet the median house price more than doubled in many locations, okay? So from 2002 to 2008, the standard variable home loan rate increased from 6.3%, that's where it started, okay? Went to 9.5% and yet the median house price doubled in more than 100 cities and towns across Australia, okay? including six out of the eight capital cities, okay? So some of the really top performers was Cairns in Queensland, which increased 147% in that six year period, Burnie in Tasmania, 199%, and then Albany in Western Australia, which is 199% as well. Okay, now when we're talking about a price rise of 199%, essentially 200%, that means that property prices trebled. In a six year period where there were 22 increases to the variable interest rate, okay? So if that doesn't give you confidence, I'm not sure what will, okay? Yes, it means that you cannot just buy anywhere and speculate and invest blindly. Yes, you need to do your due diligence, but there is no doubt in my mind that as interest rates continue to, to rise, and yes, I do expect that they will, there will be further rate rises, there will be markets that are going to, to rise. The other good news 
for you as a property investor is that there are so many locations where I see really good capital growth potential where the rents are also likely to increase two and a half grand for the year, even five grand for the year, which means the rental increase in those markets will more than offset any increase in your interest rates, okay? Plus add negative gearing onto, onto that as well. And essentially you're not gonna see a massive impact to your cash flow as a property investor if you target the right markets, okay? So that's why as an investor, I think there is some great scope for capital growth. It's a great time to, to, to buy. And look, some of the markets where I'm seeing this strong rental demand are Brisbane with a general vacancy of under 1%. But here's the other thing, even with new bills, right? With new properties coming on the market, that's accounting for less than 3% of the total number of houses in, in Brisbane, okay? You've got Adelaide with a vacancy rate of nearly zero, I think it's 0.3% or, or so, okay? Massive demand there on, on rental, which is, which is gonna see rents rise. You've got Perth as, as well with a vacancy rate of 0.5%. Hobart with a vacancy rate of virtually zero, I think it's 0.2%. Okay, I'm just going through capital cities. Then there are many regional areas as well where the vacancy rate is as tight, if not even tighter, okay? There is a definite rental crisis. As an investor, you are providing a solution by providing rental accommodation, okay? But at the same time, it means that you can be very comfortable knowing that you can get very strong cash flow, okay? You could be buying in an area, if you do your research correctly, that has all the right supply and demand dynamics to give you strong capital growth, Right now, we're finding some areas for our clients that are priced under $600,000, even under $500,000, which I expect are gonna see 10, 20% capital growth at the minimum over the next little while, all right? So I hope this episode has given you a bit of another insight into just what's happening around Australia. I'm trying to share as much data as I can because I don't want you to be the person who looks back in 12 months time, two years time and goes, I wish I'd bought an investment property in 2022 when prices were so low. I could have made some significant capital gains, but I've missed out again. So if you're listening to me, I really hope that you're not that person. You take action, you do your due diligence, you get the professional help that you need as buyers agents, we're definitely able to, to assist you if you feel that's something you require. But don't let your investing decisions be dictated by the headlines. Let them be dictated by data. Look through what's happened in, in history. Yes, you might need to avoid many markets in, in Sydney and Melbourne and Canberra, I understand that. But remember, Australia is a big country. There are plenty of other markets out there where prices are rising and you've got a great opportunity to get in, especially when so many others who are not trying to educate themselves like you are by listening to me here, they're simply being guided by the headlines or misguided by the headlines, which means they're not going and looking at these markets with great potential for, for, for growth, which allows you an opportunity to get in right now before others find out that maybe the headlines were wrong again. Hi, it's Nero here again, and thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw, and you're looking for a proven recipe, a blueprint on how to build a property portfolio that gives you passive income, then click the link below this video and get a copy of my book, Wake Up Wealthier, How to Build a Property Portfolio that pays you an income each and every month, okay? When you click the link and you download your book, you can get both a digital version and the audio version in case you don't like reading, all right? So I used to sell this book for $49, but right now I'm making it totally free why? Because I want more people to get this information and I know that a segment of you will then like what you see in the book and choose to reach out to find out more about our services. But even if you don't, if you're serious about building a property portfolio that pays your passive income, then you really want to get my book, Wake Up Wealthier. It contains the secrets that I have fine-tuned over the last 19 years. It's totally free for a limited time. Click the link below.